Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, Mrs. Peel liked the country. She also liked old, large, rambling houses. But she didn't like her visit to Stokely House one little bit. Conrad had a gun pressed firmly in her back. Come along. Inside, no tricks. Charming manners. Shut up. Uh, Jenna, come and meet Mrs. Emma Peel and tell me exactly what I should do with her. Anything goes. Good day, Mrs. Peel. I'm sorry, but I really haven't much time to bother with you at the moment. You see, I have important guests arriving at any moment. Throw her in the cellar and lock the door, Conrad. I'll deal with her later. Hurry now. That's a good boy. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 4 of this story, in which Emma Peel finds herself in grave peril, and John Steed gets a profitable offer. Straight from the shoulder. John Steed and Emma Peel were investigating the leakage of information on the new secret FF-70 rifle, and had discovered there had been crooked transactions at the armaments factory. Lady Adriana Beardsley had got her hands on a large consignment and had interested Colonel Aristides, a wealthy revolutionary, in buying the rifles. It was typical of Mrs. Peel that she interfered in her usual hit-first-ask-questions-later manner. It had landed her up in the damp, dark cellar of Stokely House, while Lady Adriana entertained her distinguished guest. Colonel Aristides believed in getting down to things. He was lying on the rich sitting room carpet. He was in a firing position, sighting a rifle. I like it, Lady Beardsley. I like it. Lightweight ammunition, fast firing, telescopically sighted, high muzzle velocity. The FF-70 has been designed for the conditions in your country. Uh, I'll buy all you've got, all 3,000. Uh, not quite yet, Colonel. I'm not open to private offers. Yes, not before the auction. Uh, auction? Well, I always think they're so fair, don't you? I mean... Think of the situation in other areas of the world, Colonel. Uh, of course, there are other buyers. How many? More than enough to preserve a, a spirit of competition. However, Colonel, I can say I do look favorably on your offer to take the entire consignment. Good, good. Unless, of course, that someone else makes the same offer. And who can that be? You're in touch with John Steed. Oh, my. Now, why do you say that? Steed has appointed himself... Buying agent for my president. How interesting. I haven't met Mr. Steed yet. There is really no point. You know our government is bankrupt. The president may think that my rifles are worth a special effort. He'd be right, of course, but let me show you around the grounds and explain to you what my little demonstration will be like. That's the way to the garden. You may take the rifle with you. Uh, very well. Lady Adriana allowed her guest to go first, then she quickly whispered to Conrad. Prices should be very buoyant this afternoon, Conrad. Contact this John Steed, whoever he is. We can always do with another customer. Get him down here this afternoon. How, um, how do I find Use him? It's your initiative, dear boy. If he's a respectable businessman, he should be in the London Telephone Directory, shouldn't he? Oh, coming, Colonel, coming. Mrs. Peel spent a miserable morning. John Steed, quite a pleasant one. He readily agreed to meeting Lady Beardsley and enjoyed the drive in the crisp morning air. As he turned into the driveway of Stokely House, the Colonel, with the inevitable Giles, was practicing some golfing shots on the lawn. It really is the most outrageous thing, Giles. I consider Steed's behavior to be most ungentlemanly. 
Taking a commission to buy arms for the president is a betrayal of friendship. I agree. It's most unsporting. If both sides have arms, it isn't a coup d'etat. It's a war. Mm. Particularly unfortunate since I'm so fond of steed. Yes. Yes, you're right. <sighs> Kill him. Steed, unaware of this sudden decision on the part of his old friend, arrived in a chair. Bearing. Well, afternoon. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm here for the garden party. John Steed. Oh. A uh, gentleman phoned inviting me. Ah, uh, yes. You will be representing the president, I believe. The colonel mentioned it? Very sporting of him. Nevertheless, Mr. Steed, I'd like to see your credentials. Oh, certainly. Steed pulled a black leather case from the seat beside him, snapped it open. It was filled with banknotes. Oh, satisfactory man? Hmm. Eminently, Mr. Steed. I am Lady Adriana Beardsley. Park your car around the back and join the others. Delighted. Tea on the terrace in ten minutes. So glad you could come. Beardsley? Rings a bell. Ah, well. Steed started his car and drove it round the back, reversing expertly and parking it alongside a fleet of cars. Several of them were flying ambassadorial pennants. Steed was rather amused by this, and walking with his black case back to the house, he stopped to examine one on a Rolls-Royce. As he did so, the man Giles loomed out of the bushes. He raised a long pistol with a silencer attached. His trigger finger began to squeeze slowly. The shot thudded out. Metal was ripped on the radiator. Steed ducked and rolled beneath the car. Steed on the ground drew his own gun like lightning. But before he could even get his bearings, another shot rang out. Conrad approached casually, rifle under his arm. I'm uh, much obliged to you. Conrad bent over Giles and took the gun from his dead hand. Uh, standard mark seven, seven point six five millimeter, sixteen sixteen silencer. Uh, you're an authority. I suppose so. No stopping power. We had to get rid of this oaf. Never liked him. Besides, Adriana believed in a spirit of cooperation. Very enlightened of her. Uh, shall we go in? Uh, you can meet the others. This way. <laughs> Conrad didn't take Steed into the main part of the house. Had they ventured near the drawing room, they would have met Mrs. Peel. You've been extremely troublesome. Me? I'm always as good as gold. I'm left with one man short for this afternoon due to your tedious ways of the armament factory. One man completely out of action. Oh, I'm sure you can rustle up a few more. I'm very sorry. I accept your apology, of course, but I feel it would be more helpful if you gave some concrete help. In what way? Take his place, for instance. I don't really see how I could. With your skills, Mrs. Peel, and your strong instinct for survival, I, I think you might give us a very good run for our money. The demonstration will be competitive, and may the best man or woman win. I do trust you are a reasonable shot, Mrs. Peel. I have been known to hit a target in my time. Splendid. It'll be arranged in couples. You will be competing against my brother. Your brother? Yes. Conrad is my brother, and quite the best shot in the country. <laughs> Should be interesting for both of us, shouldn't it? John Steed took a long and careful walk around the grounds. There were more men about the place than he realized. Lady Beardsley seemed to be onto a good thing. Many were already studying the ornamental gardens, wondering just what form the demonstration would take. Steed found himself moving cautiously through the undergrowth. His foot struck something in the bushes. He stopped and tore away some ivy and bracken. He uncovered a small stone headstone in the shape of a machine gun and read the words, The last resting place of Scamp, beloved companion of Hector Beardsley, November 7th, 1915. Hector Beardsley... Ah. This gets more and more intriguing. Coming back to the house, 
Steed met the colonel. He greeted him as affably as always. Steed, Steed, my dear fellow. Have you had tea? Yes, yes, thank you, Colonel. I'm pleased to see you got here. And you too. Steed put his hand into his pocket and drew out a gun. The Colonel raised an eyebrow. It was Giles' gun. Standard Mark 7, 7.65 millimeter. 16, 16 silencer. No stopping power. I was lucky it didn't stop me. Do you like it back? Oh, look here, Steed. I, I think we should have a, a firm talk. As an old friend, uh, why not come in with me? Uh, join forces. The president wouldn't like it. If we, uh, we um, outbid the others, we pool resources, we are bound to get the arms we need. Then I'll be president within a week. And what will I get? Judgeship. Uh, wouldn't suit me. A ministry for foreign aid uh, can be very lucrative. Uh, so I believe, and all the chances for a fiddle, while Rome burns. Well, uh, name your place. I'll accommodate. I don't think so, Colonel. Ah, it seems that our hostess wishes to commence, shall we? I won't waste your valuable time on sales talk about our new rifles, gentlemen. That, as you know, is not our way. We demonstrate. <laughs> if a man sells vacuum cleaners, he shows them at work, cleaning carpets. We sell weapons, and there's only one way to demonstrate their efficiency. Oh, <laughs> the infantryman functions under conditions quite unlike those found on a rifle range. He's often hot, near exhaustion when the time comes to kill. So, gentlemen, our first of several demonstrations. The SF-70 in use under stress. Uh, Jackson, Erickson. The two men who had originally tried to kill Mrs. Peel stepped forward. Are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. At a point known to both men, exactly 100 yards away from each of them, we have placed a loaded rifle with a safety catch on. So... When I give the command, on your mark, get set, go. The two men obeyed and leapt like greyhounds from a trap. Anger in their eyes, murder in their hearts. Lady Adriana Beardsley's demonstration had begun. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. <laughs>